Okay, we're rolling. Okay, this is an interview with Leland Emlaw at the Anchor Down Inn, uh, Ogdensburg, New York, the 24th of April, 2003, approximately 1.30 p.m. Interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? Leland Emlaw. I was born in Norfolk, and I was born 8 to 7th, 22. Okay. Um, what was your educational background prior to going into service? I quit in my senior or junior year. All right. And went into service. Okay. Do you uh, remember where you were and what you what your reaction was when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Mm -hmm. Three of us were coming out of a pool hall in Norfolk. We got in the bottom steps, and the owner it was uh, Lee and uh, Morgan's father when he ran the pool hall. And uh, he called us back, boys, come here. And we went back in, and he was telling about the bombing. Mm -hmm. Just with bombs. Do you remember what Never you thought it. about it when you when you heard? Yeah, I figured I I was 19. I was figured I would be going in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. When, were you drafted, or did you enlist? I enlisted. I was called up in the Army, for the Army in Messina. And then the next day or two, there were three or four or four of us. I went to Watertown enlisting in the Navy. Mm -hmm. Why did you pick the Navy? I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you, really. Okay. Um, all right, could you tell us where, when you uh, went in and then where you went for boot camp and so on? I went in in uh, November 42, and I went boot camp in Sampson. I was about the third bunch in there, first company, second, third company, third mm -hmm. company. I was there for about four weeks, and then they sent me to gunnery school down Little Creek, Virginia. Now, when you were at Samson, did they have uh, boats there for No, you? no, they had nothing. They were still building it. The, I know oh, uh, they were still building one it. veteran told us they had the, an outline of a whaleboat on the ground, and they pretended they were paddling when no. he was there. We didn't get much there marching uh -huh. down there anyway. Uh -huh. A lot of fire watching we done. Yeah, they were they were building. Uh -huh. you know, okay. Just like flies down there building. Boy, there's a lot of men down there building. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. And then from there, I went to gunnery school in Little Big Creek, Virginia, and I was there from three or four weeks. Mm -hmm. Then I went in the Armed Guard. You know what the Armed Guard is? Yes. I went in the Armed Guard in Brooklyn. And I got orders to go over, I forget what pair it was, two of us. This ship belonged to Panama before the war. Yamasee was the name of it. Y-A-M-A-S-S-E-E. -S -S -E. We were gunners on that. Um, what was the ship like? Was it? Uh, it was an old ship. Mm -hmm. It was an old ship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, what kind of guns were fitted out on it? We had one old six pounder, mm -hmm. <laughs> which you ate from here across the road, and we had uh, four uh, twenty millimeters. Okay. How long were you on that? I was on that less than less than a year. I made two trips to Reykjavik, Iceland, up to an air base up there. We brought supplies up and stuff. And uh, the first time over, we lost a lot of ships. In fact, I'll show you this. You remember the Spencer, the Coast Guard? Split? Oh, yes, yes. Well, I was, I was over there when they sunk this sub. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A couple, three. Well, hold it up to the oh. camera and Wayne can get that. There's a picture of this. Let me see here. Yeah. There's a convoy. We were the second bunch in here, the second row. I can know, probably way back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the Spencer. Throwing depth charges off. Uh, there's a German survivor here. And there's the ship. We went by when it was about like that. She's ready to go down. Oh, you saw the submarine? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I say we was in the second row here, the convoy. Mm -hmm. And there it is, there sinking. Okay. There's some more prisoners that the Spencer picked up. Mm -hmm. You didn't stop to pick up Oh, no, prisoners. no, you couldn't stop the convoy. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, no. No. So that was on your first? Uh, first trip. I made two trips. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you were in a convoy bo both times? Yeah, both times. Mm -hmm. There's uh, more prisoners. 
more prisoners with a with a spencer back here. They sunk it. These are the prisoners. Yeah, and that was over in England. Yeah. Then from then, I uh, second trip back. I come home on leave, and I went back to the Armed Guard Center, and I was transferred in the fleet. I waited in Pier, uh, Pier 92 in New York. I waited for my ship, a destroyer. Uh -huh. <coughs> Before I go any further, you probably heard of John B. Buckley, the man that brought me from yes. MacArthur out of the Philippines. He was a yes, skipper. He was the one that took um, well, MacArthur out, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He was the commander of your ship? He was a commander. Uh -huh. What was the ship that you were in? Uh, Endicott, 495, destroyer. Want your picture over here? Um, what we could do is at the end of uh, the, the end, end of the interview, okay. we'll, we'll uh, have you show the rest of your picture. Okay. okay, if you don't yeah. mind. All right, so uh, how long were you on the Endicott? Till the end of war. So I got discharged. I got off at war in Okinawa in the uh, latter part of September, mm -hmm. 40. So uh, when you were on the Endicott, were you mostly in? Were you in the Atlantic at all, or was all your... Oh, three. Duty? Atlantic, Mediterranean, and Pacific. Oh, okay. Why don't you tell us about your duty on the Endicott? I was a cook. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cook on it. How many people did you have to cook for? It was a little less than 300. Mm -hmm. 298, I think. Yeah. Did you have a lot of fresh food, or was most of it frozen? After we left port, we did, but after we get out, we didn't okay. have it. We saved a little for ourselves, though, with cooks. Uh-huh. Yeah, fresh stuff, yeah. Um, what, uh, was the Endicott involved mostly in convoy duty, or? Yeah, a lot of convoy duty. Mm -hmm. And then before the war, or the invasion, the in Normandy, we, uh, well, we escorted troop ships up and down the channel, getting them ready to go into the invasion. In, in May 24th, we were rammed over there. What do you mean rammed? Banged into. Well, well, so, why you describe that? What happened? Well, I don't know. There were so many ships in the channel, yeah. and, and it was dark and foggy, and the ship just hit us up front. Well, do you know what kind of ship it was? Or? Uh, Exeter was the name of it. Uh -huh. It was a big one. Uh -huh. a big one. Pardon? Cruiser, was it? English cruiser? No, no. The Exeter? Yeah. Oh, it was a, no, it was a transport. It was a big one. So then when he, we got orders to go to Cardiff, Wales, and get patched up. They put a plate inside the, and outside. And then we went back over to, they were fighting in Sherbrooke, I think, at the time. And we were back over there just for a day. And from then we, uh, let me see, I better look it up here and make sure. And then we got orders to uh, more convoy duty. involved at all in the invasion itself, uh, firing, doing... Uh, we done a little fire, not much. Uh -huh. We would have, we'd have been right in there. See, there was five five destroyers in our squadron. Uh -huh. Of course, we were rammed, so we... Yeah, uh, okay, so that... that saved us there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was day. Then we come back to England. May 24th, 1944. Exit there. He hit us. So he went for repairs and part of Wales. Then we rejoined, rejoined the fleet 12th of July and we escorted LSTs and CLIs into the Mediterranean from the build up, for the build up, for the attack in southern France. The destroyer together with the uh, Two, uh, I can't pronounce the names of but two uh, English gunboats and 17 port torpedo boats bombarded the beach. Uh -huh. Son of France. We bombarded it down a ways from where the invasion was, trying to pull the troops down six or seven hours before they landed. Oh, you were trying to decoy yeah. them down? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Now, th was this one, uh, I noticed uh, in the form you filled out, you talked about uh, escorting British gunboats. Is this one you... That's used? the... Uh, gunboats. Mm -hmm. Now, this is when Douglas Fairbanks Jr. He was, was on it. He was on it. In fact, I got a picture here. Mm -hmm. Coming up in the gangplank. So he... Uh, he was with the British and, and their gunboats? He must have had something to do with them. I, do, I couldn't tell you. Mm -hmm. and I don't know. The gunboats, these two German uh, ships were going after them. Mm -hmm. And they called for us to come down because they were small. They would probably sunk both of them. Mm -hmm. So we come down. And the first shot that we took at one, we hit it square in the center and it blew up. I got pictures of it here. Mm -hmm. in the prisoners. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we went after the second one. Week I can hear the bullets going by now, hmm. zinging, zinging by. Now, were you yeah. below decks or were you up on top? I was uh, <coughs> 20 millimeter. Oh, okay. That was my battle station at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So even though you were a cook, you still uh, made oh, yeah. the yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we sunk both of them. We picked up 165 survivors. I've got pictures of them here too. And uh, we buried probably on ship five or six or seven of them died, the Germans. Mm -hmm. We buried them at sea. And I can see their commander now in the back of the ship. Every time a body went over, he hail Hitler. Mm -hmm. I can see it now. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And from there, let's see. Then we uh, went on more convoy duty. Brought a, brought a con oh, to Corsica. We escorted the convoy to Corsica, an island off, off the coast of uh, Naples. Mm -hmm. Then we went for overhauls and refreshing training in October. In the end of that was in the end of 1944. January 1945, we sailed to Bermuda on a scouting line. And then we rendezvoused with a uh, Heavy cruiser, Quincy. President Roosevelt was on that. We escorted him to uh, Yelta, Russia. Y A L T A. Mm -hmm. I think he yelled it. Yeah. And for the conference there. Huh? Yeah. We waited there, I guess it was a couple of days. They wouldn't let us go ashore over there. Mm -hmm. And we brought, it back, brought him back to New York. Then we, from there, we escorted a convoy to Oran. Then we went to the Charleston Navy Yard. We was converted over to a DMS. That's a destroyer minesweep. Now, when the ship was being converted, uh, did you get we to had to leave. leave? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was home. I think 17, 18 days. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then we went to Pacific. It was in uh, Task Force 52. We got over there. The Okinawa, the 23rd of September, 1945, and that's when I got off the ship. Mm -hmm. What were any, did you do any duty at all around Okinawa? No. Well, yeah, yes, we did too. There was a lot of battle wagons still there, and cruisers, and carriers, and we mm -hmm. uh, went around them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so this was basically there. after the invasion. Th that was after. And, and oh, you yeah. didn't see any of the uh, kamikaze attacks. No. Or? Oh, yes, 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 yes. There was a few of them. Mm -hmm. I didn't see them. It was off in the distance. Mm -hmm. I didn't see them. Mm -hmm. We screened around for their big stuff. See. Mm -hmm. Did you? Were you there for that typhoon? That I was in that. I will tell you about that. that. I guess so. That was terrible. That was terrible. We couldn't get up on deck. Little ships, PBYs, or small ones. Mm -hmm. They just capsized. Harold, you was in that too. Yeah. Oh, was terrible. The next day, they was boats beached up on shore. In fact, there was a sailor who went by. I think he was. I know he was a sailor. And uh, we tried to rescue him, but we couldn't. The waves were too uh, too high. He was going right towards the shore. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you um, left your ship shortly after that. They were three or four weeks. It went by points back then. Yes. And right. I had enough points to get out. Maybe some other ones, some of the rest of them did too, but they didn't want to leave. Mm -hmm. Maybe they didn't stay in or something. Mm -hmm. We did. Mm -hmm. You wanted to leave. Yeah, you started right. <laughs> I've seen enough of it. So how did you get back to the States? We came back on a... Oh, 
called Thianson was the name of a submarine uh, tender. Uh-huh. We come back to uh, Lido Beach. Well, I don't know if we. I guess we come to Norfolk. And we took they took the train up to uh, Lido Beach for the discharge. Was it, was that uh, after the atomic bomb was dropped, or was that before? We was on our way over when it was dropped. To Okinawa. What was your reaction to that? I couldn't believe it. It came out with the force of 20,000 pounds of TNT, I think is what, mm-hmm. what they had up on the bulletin board. Of course, we heard all the loudspeakers. The skipper got on and told us. And then they posted it. 20,000 pounds, that's a lot of mm-hmm. explosive. What was the reaction on the ship when it was posted? I guess they're pretty happy. Because mm-hmm. we don't went in Japan, now I'm telling you, we lost probably maybe a million men. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What was your reaction when you heard about the death of President Roosevelt? Yeah, it's been sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I liked him. In fact, I I didn't see him uh, close, but he was on the chair up there in the deck when he was on the Quincy when he was going across. Yeah, mm-hmm. he was in a wheelchair, you know. Mm-hmm. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah but then, then, then. but we weren't. Oh, probably from here. Oh, I don't know. The buildings over there, around them. We weren't alone. He had other protection oh, too. Right. We get in close enough, the planes would come out. But we, they must have been. They must have been four or five destroyers around them anyway. Anyway, and then it was some heavier equipment too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. When so then there, sorry. one thing I didn't say. Just before we got rammed, uh, we were tied up. There's five shifts, I say, in the squadron, and we were tied up alongside the Thompson to destroyer. And I was going down one side of the ship and fell on the other side on uh, the other on the Thompson. He seen me about the same time I see him and fell from Norfolk. Hmm. Paul Collar. Paul hmm. Collar. Listen to Rainville now. Yeah. What's the chances of that happening? Yes, right. I've told you you've heard that Earl, probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. And another thing I want to tell you, there was a fellow from Syracuse who was with uh, Buckley. Buckley was a lieutenant, he was a lieutenant J.G. Mm-hmm. by the name of uh, Cox is his last name. Edward Cox, I think, is first. to Well, it was Cox, anyway. Mm-hmm. And he was with him. Was he? Mm-hmm. And I was home on leave, and I got something in the paper about Cox uh, being over there in Cregidor. That's where they left Cregidor. Mm-hmm. And I clicked it out, and I brought it back, and I showed it to the skipper. I mean, he was pretty thrilled. Mm-hmm. And ever since then, he used to come in the, in the galley, you know, a couple, two, three times a a week, he'd always talk. Well, he was good. He talked to anybody. He'd go out. He'd go out on deck. He'd talk to anybody. Mm-hmm. Even like a ninety-nine percent of them were. I'll tell you. Mm-hmm. He was a regular Joe. And since he knew that I, since I brought that into him, out of the paper, out of the Watertown paper, I always thought he. I don't know. He liked me. I don't know why. I just he always talked to me. Been gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now in the um, when you were in the galley working, were there any blacks working? Oh yeah, the, the, the officers had, they probably was 15 blacks on our mm-hmm. ship. What were the relationships there between With me, good. Okay. Not all of them, not the southern. We had a lot of southerners down there. Mm-hmm. Not to them. To me, I, I got along good with them. Mm-hmm. They, their cook was a, was a black, and he was a good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was a good one. But I got along good with them. When you uh, returned home, did you ever make use of the GI Bill? No. Yes, I did too. I bought a home. Okay. Yes, I did too. Right. Do you know. use the 5220 club at all? I don't think, no, no, no. No, because I went right to work shortly after I was out. Mm-hmm. Did you uh, keep in contact with anyone from the service? For a while. One of the cooks I did from mm-hmm. Tennessee. Lived back in the hills. Called him an old hillbilly. <laughs> yeah. Has your ship ever had any reunions or anything yeah, that you know of? Yeah, but I never, no, I never went, no. Mm-hmm. Do you no, join no. any of the veterans organizations? Just a legion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You still a member? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, sorry. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. I'll be there this afternoon. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Oh yes, you must be some more pictures. pictures that yeah, I got us. pictures here. My God, boys. Read that over there. Maybe I, I missed some stuff. Got that off the internet. That there's a picture of my ship, the Endicott.
Okay, got it. Better. And uh, I don't know if it was 46 or when it was, but there was a comic, comic book come out. Uh-huh. You want to see the pictures here? Sure, right? sure. Okay, uh, don't get, get up get close. Tight. you got to oh. stay back with it, okay. otherwise it goes okay. out of focus. Yeah, I can zoom right in on it. No problem. Okay, there's Buckley. Huh, I'll be darned. Do you have an original copy of that cartoon, or the comic book, or is just a copy? Just a copy, no. Uh-huh. Okay, got it. Well, that's pictures of their ship and ours. That's firing on them. Okay. We each fired a torpedo at one another. Mm -hmm. I didn't see the torpedo, but some of the boys did. I said, well, on deck, I didn't see it. Yeah. Neither of them struck. Probably a good thing. <laughs> okay. about where we hit it right there. Right in the center. That was the first one. Would you use five inch guns to hit it? Five inch 38. Mm -hmm. And we fired on the beach so much there that in the night that night we had one of them it didn't work. It was hot, awful hot. Okay. <coughs> I guess that's it. That there, you read that, that tells about picking up Fairbanks there. Just like the movies, he said. Oh, he was the commander of a British... Yeah, ship. but I don't know what he would be doing on such a small one, though. Yeah. I, I can't understand it. That other fellow, oh, there's another fellow. I got a picture here. I know this is all about Buckley. I don't know if you can get that. Well, I can get his picture in any way. To pull it forward, see. Okay. Okay. Got it. About the <coughs> secret mines charts. If you've got uh, if you've got extra copies of that, we can put that in the in the folder. Got a copy here. There's two okay. copies here. I mean, if you can spare them, if yeah, you've well, got I'd extras, <coughs> you can keep that. Oh, thank you. Got one of them. Another one of them. Now you got one picture of her. Okay, we, we didn't get that shot, I don't think. That picture there? That's when it was... Okay. That's the end got. When was that one taken? I'll look there in a minute and see the top. Okay, 1944. 44? Yep. yep. Okay, got it. There's the end of car when it was in Naples, Italy, just before the invasion. Okay. 
Okay. <coughs> There's some of the prisoners right there we picked up. Did you have was this taken with your camera? Or no, no. Something? No, we had it photorized. When we got back to New York, uh -huh. then Buckley okay. autographed them. Okay. They're all, they all autographed by Buckley. Oh. Right here. Uh -huh. See that same? No, it's no, a different one. Same. That was August 17th. Nice that he signed it to your shipmate. Yeah. Oh, he was a, he was a good fellow. Or from your shipmate, I'm from sorry. From your shipmate, yeah. He was a good fellow. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah, there's one you can have. This is here is a sketch of an artist you of the second ship that was acclaimed. one of the ships that we sunk. We got that off a prisoner. Tells on the back, the writing on the back there. Buckley's on the left. And oh, there's Douglas Fairbanks. Yeah, he's on the right. He isn't in a, that is an American uniform. I don't know if it's English or... I think he was English. Uh -huh. Okay, got it. But it says that he was a commander. I mean, you can tell by uniform. I don't know. Ships, it's out there. You can see the, see the top. Okay. In uh, in '44, October '24th, '44, Buckley told us that he'd throw a big party for us in New York. We got back. We was on our way back. So he gave us time to get our wives, or girlfriends, or your mothers, or sisters, to wherever you wanted to bring. And uh, this girl right here, her father was with Buckley over in Bataan. She was a singer. Okay. She was from Long Island. Whereabouts are you in that picture? My wife and I is right there. Oh, okay. So you were married before he went into service? No, no. Or during no, service? I come home. Yeah, during uh -huh. service. Okay, that's you right there. In fact, a year before this picture was taken. Uh -huh. I'm married in 25th, 43, and this is 44. Okay, got it. Yeah. Now he paid for that whole party. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, that was really nice. Yeah, and the orchestra was here. Buckley was right here. Uh -huh. Half the ship one night, and the other half the other. Yep. Yeah. I know that was a big ballroom. How do you think uh, being in the service, do you think it affected or changed your life in any way? Well, I tell you, when I get out, I'm not allowed to drink it. I like my beer. I, I'm right in it, but uh, you got to grow up. I was young, you know. I was 20, I think. I just, yeah, I was 20 in August and I went in uh, November. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I, uh, I still like my beer, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we used to go out. <clears throat> I'll tell you one story. We went out, my buddy and I one time, of course, late getting back, we always was get drinking, you know how that goes. And uh, 
had captain's mass in front of the captain. That's after, you know, after I brought that statement from Coxer. He says, you fellas never learn or something like that. And I remember one time, you give me seven days. And that's only, you can only serve that while you're in port, you know. You're out to sea, you know, I don't count. And he, uh, I don't know, he made some comment one time, I forget what it was. He was, learnt your lesson or something, I'm lying. Either call you sailor or by your last name if he knew you. Yeah. How you doing, sailor, or something like that. Yeah, he was a good age boy, I'll tell you. Every man there worships him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your interview. Thank you. Yeah.